Welcome to this episode of Growing at Ryman Gardens. My name's Nathan Brockman and I'm the butterfly wing curator here at the gardens. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about some of the ways we feed the nearly 800 butterflies found in the Christina Ryman butterfly wing. Now, before we go into the butterfly wing, I need to give a little disclaimer. The butterfly wing is a contained environment. So the feeding method you're about to see, especially the artificial ones, can be done in your home garden outside. But keep in mind, you're gonna get a lot more bees, wasps, ants, flies, and beetles than you will ever get butterflies. But if you don't mind those things in your garden outside, Go ahead and copy these feeding methods, and who knows, you might get a few butterflies. With nearly 800 mouths to feed at any given time in the Christina Ryman butterfly wing, keeping all the different species of butterflies and moths fed and happy can be a tricky job. Now this job is made a little easier, since none of the large silk moths, such as the Atlas, Cynthia, or Luna moths, have functioning mouth parts. As adults, these individuals live entirely off of stored energy from their caterpillar stage. But since moths only make up less than 2% of all the individuals found in the wing, that isn't much relief. With roughly 80 different species in the butterfly wing, it's important to have a variety of food choices since some species are quite selective about the food they will eat. The primary way the majority of butterflies in the butterfly wing are fed is with nectar plants. Essentially, a nectar plant is any flowering plant which produces a sugary solution which the plant uses as a reward for insects or other animals that aid in the pollination process. The two plants which are used most in the butterfly wing are in the genus Lantana and Penta. Both of these plants produce several flowers which grow in clusters known as umbels. Of those two plants, the Lantana is probably used by a larger diversity of butterflies. Lantana is a tropical shrub which grows so well in certain climates that it's considered a noxious weed. There are several varieties in this genus, and the flowers can be white, red, orange, yellow, and blue, or a combination of any of these colors, depending on the variety. Lantana flowers are very small, which makes it possible for even the smallest of butterflies to easily get the nectar from the flowers. Pentas, on the other hand, are a larger flower and it is often only visited by the larger butterflies in the wing. There are several different varieties of pentas, which come in a variety of colors like red, pink, violet, and white. If deadheaded, both of these plants can produce large numbers of flowers, making them an excellent source of nectar all year round. Some of the other nectar plants used in the butterfly wing include the coral vine, which produces several pink flowers the butterflies really seem to enjoy. The Jotropha has a red flower and can grow quite tall in the butterfly wing, offering an interesting feeding site above visitors' heads. Then there's the porterweed, which is a very low-growing shrub that develops only a small number of flowers at a time, but they are there all year round. Ixora is a large woody shrub, which at certain times of the year can produce large flower umbels, followed by an interesting-looking berry. The Panama rose is a beautiful bush, which in the wing is covered by a large number of pink flowers all year round. And finally, there is the pygmy melon, whose orange flowers not only produce nectar, but also produce an excellent source of pollen for the species of butterflies that can use it as a protein source. Since the butterfly wing has so many butterflies in it, artificial nectar dishes are also provided. This ensures that if the plants keep up with the demand of the butterflies, that there's an alternate source of food available to them. Two separate artificial nectar solutions are used within the butterfly wing. The first is a diluted lemon-lime Gatorade mix, which provides the butterflies with an ample supply of salts and minerals. And the second is a mixture of water, sugar, and pollen. The pollen, which can be used as a protein source by certain species of butterflies, and then a water-sugar ratio of 20 to 1. In hummingbird feeders, people often use a 4 to 1 solution, but this is considered to be too concentrated for the butterflies to handle. These solutions are then poured into glass dishes with plastic scrubber pads in them. The scrubber pads make a great place for the butterflies to sit and then put their proboscis down through just as if they were feeding from a flower. Now some of the butterflies found in the wing will actually never feed from a flower. They don't even enjoy nectar. Some species in the wild will visit things like dung, urine, or carrion. There are others still that prefer things like rotting fruit. Since this option smells much better than the others, it's one we use in the butterfly wing. 
In the butterfly wing, we actually use two separate dishes of fruit. The first is down low, where the general public can see it. Uh, this fruit is usually changed out twice a week so that it never starts looking too bad. But since it's the alcohols that are produced as the fruit spoils that the butterflies really enjoy, it's good to have a dish that can really go bad so the butterflies can really enjoy it. The second dish is found up on top of the waterfall in the butterfly wing, and it's kind of a special concoction. It's a mixture of uh, beer, dark brown sugar, fermentating fruit, and corn syrup, all mixed together and allowed time to fermentate in the sun. And as you can see, this dish is very popular with certain species of butterflies. For those butterflies that would visit tree sap in the wild, we've developed sap blocks in the butterfly wing. These are essentially wooden blocks with hole drilled at angles in them. And then in those, we place syrup. We actually tried several different formulas, molasses, maple syrup, corn syrup, and then finally generic syrup. And it turned out that the generic syrup got the best results. And then the final way butterflies can get nutrients in the butterfly wing is through a behavior known as puddling. As we go around and water the plants, moisture gets on the pathway. The butterflies, especially the males, will visit this moisture and take up salts and minerals from the ground. This is a behavior that can be seen in the wild quite often. And usually when you see it, you see large numbers of a similar species all exhibiting the behavior at the same time. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Growing at Ryman Gardens. If you'd like to learn more about Ryman Gardens or to see other videos, please visit our website at rymangardens.com. Thank you. Mm -hmm.